Since the initial Galaxy Fold was released, Samsung has been quite clear about its opinion that the future of mobile computing lies in devices that can transform from standard slabs to large screen tabs. The company's most recent effort to persuade the general public that foldables are authentic is the Galaxy Z Fold 4. Even after four years, Samsung still has a lot to work on with the Z Fold. Even though there is still little competition in the market for folding phones, there are high hopes that Samsung will finally give its flagship foldable the boost it needs to justify the price at once. While my two weeks with the Z Fold 4 are covered in this review, I'll be putting the phone through its paces over the course of the next month and updating you. I'll be investigating its appearance components, software experience, and standout features. The Galaxy Z Fold 4 appears similar to the Z Fold 3 from the previous year at first glance. This is due to the fact that Samsung had previously done a good job of creating a framework that can unfold into a respectable sized tablet, is IPX8 certified for water resistance, and fits snugly in most, if not all, pockets. While polished aluminum cascades down the sides, hinge, buttons, and ports, the surface is nonetheless given a soft touch matte frosted finish. Given that the side of the phone is where our hands typically make contact with it, and that glossy textures are significantly more grippy than satin ones, I applaud this industrial appearance decision. Only after paying closer attention to the Z Fold 4's thin bezels, rounder display edges, and ever so lighter footprint, will you realize what Samsung has been up to for the past 12 months. All of these adjustments, albeit subtle, are more useful than you might expect, especially if you've used earlier Z Fold models, and are now accustomed to their larger form factors. That's where I'm at right now. Making the switch from the Galaxy Z Fold 3 to the lighter Z Fold 4 has been comfortable and familiar. The less frequent hand and arm aches speak for themselves. Samsung claims that it was able to pull off this physical feat by removing several metals and plates from beneath the displays, and installing a new, more streamlined hinge system. However, the Z Fold 4 is still a substantial piece of technology, and it won't feel like a smaller version of your iPhone or Android. And despite the device's considerable power and multi-screen capabilities, Samsung appears satisfied with the way it looks just now. The 2-in-1, small screen to big screen mechanic of foldables is the main justification for anyone to purchase one. The Z Fold 4 automatically surpasses our previous folding winner, the Z Fold 3, because to the Z Fold 4's two displays, which are Samsung's most aesthetically pleasing pair to it. A big 6.2-inch dynamic AMOLED panel with a refresh rate range of 120Hz to 1Hz is present on the cover screen. The phone still feels more like a TV remote than anything else, despite the aspect ratio being a little bit shorter than the Z Fold 3's. Glide typing is the way to go because the cover screen keyboard experience is still a cramped nightmare for people with larger fingers. The inner main screen, measuring 7.6 inches, is equally as optimized as the outside one for all of your multitasking and power user needs. With the potential to ramp up to 120Hz for smooth scrolling or slow down to 1Hz for still frames, Samsung's dynamic AMOLED technology boosts it as well. The tablet-like display has the same boxy shape as earlier iterations, and the recognizable crease still runs down the middle, albeit more subtly. The Z Fold 4's displays are substantially brighter than those of its predecessors, which has surprised me the most. Samsung states that the brightness of both screens has increased from 422 to 1000 nits, more than tripling from the previous year. I can vouch to the Z Fold 4's enhanced visibility after stumbling around city streets, the subway, and office buildings for the previous week. Even ordering an Uber, which required locating my location on a busy city map, was simple to do in the bright sunshine. The heart of Samsung's new and improved foldable experience is the hinge. The Z Fold 4 adopts a linear, rotation-based method, as opposed to the gear-based construction of the previous three generations, in order to reduce the thickness and weight of the hinge. I'll have to wait and watch how the new assembly holds up over time, especially if the mechanism deteriorates, or if bubbles and dust are able to penetrate the polymer coating. The phone-to-tablet Android foldables are essentially Android tablets. That implies that the Z Fold's main screen format suffers from the same software flaws that tech experts rightly criticize Google for. The Z Fold 4 ships with Android 12L, Google's large screen optimized operating system, in an effort to solve this issue. The improvement to apps that are often not developed for larger displays is the main draw of Android 12L. Additionally, a few appearance tweaks and motions have been made to better complement the tablet experience. Popular Google and Microsoft services get a more desktop like user interface on the Z Fold 4, which segments various program components across the main 7.6 inch screen in a deliberate and elegant way. Not every program has had the 12L treatment, though Twitter and Instagram are still stretched out versions of their usual selves, and you'll have to hope that the less well-known applications are any better. The only way to fix the app sizing issue right now is to manually configure each app's aspect ratio, whether you want it to launch in full screen, 16x9, or 4x3 scaling, in the display settings. The more conventional 16x9 aspect ratio ought to function well in situations like Instagram. Taskbar and Flex Mode are two updated and improved productivity tools included in the Android 12L experience. 
with a row of quick access apps, two most recent apps, an app drawer button, and the regular navigation keys. The former is comparable to the Z Fold 3 side mounted app menu, but is now located at the bottom of the screen. It is comparable to the excellent dock feature of the iPad OS in terms of usability and accessibility. Additionally, there isn't actually a choice to turn on the taskbar. It merely shows when you launch an app. Make sure you're using the One UI launcher by default and not a third-party launcher. However, it's not so much the taskbar's functionality that changes the game. It's the capability to quickly drag and drop up to three programs from the dock onto the screen. Positioning each app window just requires dragging it to the desired location. You are no longer required to set up app pairings or go to your recent apps tray to select ones to arrange for split screen. Like it does when you move widgets and apps around on the home screen, the Z Fold 4 takes care of the rest by reorienting the other windows. Multi-app setups have always been difficult for me to navigate, but the new taskbar is genuinely simple and user-friendly. It's a warm encouragement to launch more applications simultaneously. Flex Mode is another desktop mode that has undergone the desktop transformation, where you open a stock Samsung application or a third-party one and position one half of the main screen. Similar to how you would with a laptop lid, it now displays a multi-finger gesture-based trackpad. When enabled, you can use the simulated trackpad to tap, swipe, scroll, and even squeeze in and out to navigate the upper half of your Z Fold 4. Does this feature have a gimmick? Absolutely. You should engage with the Z Fold 4 like the touchscreen foldable that it is, unless you want to go back in time to the days of netbooks and tiny computers. I conducted performance testing while keeping an eye out for latency, stutters, and other vulnerabilities. After all, this phone costs $1,799, so it must deliver on the extensive feature set that Samsung advertises. The Z Fold 4 experience has exceeded my expectations, which is wonderful. The Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset ensures seamless operation of all apps, whether there are one or many, and the 12 gigs of RAM is more than enough for demanding work. When switching between launchers and gesture modes on smartphones, I frequently get problems, but not with this one. Even better, this proficiency extends to loading media-rich websites like Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, which preload their movies and graphics in the background. The Z Fold 4 is essentially Doom Scroll approved. Gaming is another option. Stretching an app onto the larger 7.6-inch main screen looks extremely stunning if the software or emulator supports it. Since the scene and under display camera are less obvious in this year's model, it definitely helps that games like Genshin Impact and NBA Jam are immersive and vibrant when broadcast from edge to edge. My only significant criticism of performance is its short-term nature. For instance, if you turn up a game's graphic settings to its maximum, you'll see that the Z Fold's meager 4400 mAh power battery drains faster and faster. This is not to claim that frequent use results in longer battery life. My review unit typically had the screen on for 4 hours before turning off over the course of 2 weeks. Unfortunately, the Z Fold 4's durability is not noticeably better than that of its predecessor. I wish there had been at least a 5000 mAh capacity included. Users of the Z Fold, both new and old, will currently have to make up with what I would call mid-tier battery life. You can use it for the entire workday, but you'll need to charge it for the trip home. Speaking of, the Z Fold 4 can be charged quickly up to 25 watt, and can go from 0 to 50% in roughly 30 minutes. It's not the 120 watt charging available on some international phones, but it's sufficient for a morning recharge. Surprise, surprise, there isn't a charger in the box, so you'll need to purchase an appropriate adapter to get the maximum wattage. Users of Samsung's large screen foldable Galaxy Z Fold may certainly agree that the device has never had a real flagship camera system. The Z Fold has either had a year-old lens arrangement or one that is inferior to Samsung Galaxy Ultra series for the past three generations. The three cameras on the rear of the Z Fold 4 are still a triple array, but the updated lenses are now a 50 megapixels wide lens, a 12 megapixels ultra wide lens, and a 10 megapixels telephoto with 30x space zoom. The new camera system is the same as the one found on the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus, with the exception of the ultra enhanced wide's field of view. With the help of the 12 megapixels ultra wide lens, the Z Fold 4 does a flawless job of bringing in the colors of various objects and hues, while keeping what's in the center and focus in well lit areas like this. I particularly appreciate how the clouds and sky are not overexposed or overcolored. In terms of color reproduction, the Z Fold 4 prefers a more assertive and punchy tone than anything else, turning up the saturation of photographs. The three lenses default output should be enough if you don't frequently alter photos. The 12 megapixels telephoto lens performs admirably as well. The background of the in-focus subject is blurred naturally, while the background of the image is precisely cropped out by the camera. The seagull are expertly kept in focus in the sample photo below, thanks to the Z Fold. Let's also speak about the front-facing cameras, and all the different ways you can take a selfie with the device's shape-shifting capabilities. With the Z Fold 4, you can take a selfie in four different ways. The first option uses the standard front-facing cameras, which are located on the cover screen and the main screen, respectively. In all honesty, 
I'm not sure why the front-facing under-display camera still exists, given how simple it is to capture selfies using the primary rear cameras. Its output is still washed out, and to make the image even presentable, more post-processing is required. Here are a few observations I made while using the Z Fold 4 that I believe will be very helpful to serious customers. I've already covered the primary features and performance aspects of the Z Fold 4. The haptics on the Z Fold 4 are among the greatest I've experienced on a smartphone. It is highly instinctive to interact with the software because to the haptic and blocky feedback. The phone is rockier when set flat on a desk, since the hump itself protrudes more than the Z Fold 3's, due to an improved camera system. The exterior cover screen of the Z Fold 3 from last year already had a screen protector fitted, not so with the Z Fold 4. The Z Fold 4 is still not certified for dust resistance, so be sure to wipe off any particles and debris that inevitably collect on your inner display to avoid any screen damage. As a professional photographer of inanimate objects, the phone's flex mode camera is revolutionary. Top-down photography has never been simpler. Even though I've had the Galaxy Z Fold 4 for one month, I still feel like there are a ton of functions and settings that I've yet to explore. That's kind of the Samsung Foldable's beauty. The Z Fold experience is one that never ends, even for fanatics like me. New use cases and software tricks reveal themselves as you stretch the gadget throughout your regular life. I wouldn't go so far as to argue that Samsung is overcharging for the product, even at $1,799. It lives up to its reputation for being capable, potent, and inventive. There is no doubting that the Z Fold 3 from a year ago is the best one to one competitor to the Z Fold 4. The latter, a fantastic, large screen foldable for work and play, is now available for less than $1,000, if the former's asking price is too high for you. You are essentially getting 75% of the Z Fold 4 for considerably less, despite the camera's system being a year old. I'm sorry, but you're months too late if you were expecting a Galaxy Note successor at this year's Unpack presentation. Well, the Z Fold 4 does provide an optional S Pen stylus and case package, the integrated experience is different from that of the original Note. Instead, take a look at the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, which features a S Pen siloed at the bottom, and mimics the Note's rectangular slab form. Thank you for watching, I hope it was useful for you, have a nice day and see you soon.